Hello everybody, my name is Josh and I am on a quest to become the least popular YouTuber in all of history. Okay, so that's not actually my intention, however, it just so happens to be that I keep making videos that are uh, a little bit sensitive. I keep going into topics that kind of will eventually get me in trouble. And today's topic is absolutely no different. It all started with my video about the pre-tribulation rapture and how it absolutely 100% is not biblical. And oh boy, I got a lot of... A lot of comments on that one. On today's video, we are going to be discussing the papacy and how Peter was not actually the rock on which Jesus was going to found the church. But before we get into that, I just want to say to all of my Catholic brothers and sisters out there, God loves you very, 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 very much. Jesus Christ has died for your sins. I consider Catholics to be brothers and sisters in Christ. And if you confess with your mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord and you believe that God raised him from the dead, then you will be saved. With that out of the way, welcome to the Gospel Mindset. This is the channel that focuses on embracing a biblical worldview in the midst of an unbiblical culture. And we are going on an adventure to talk about Peter, the rock, and what Jesus actually meant by this statement. Now, the Catholic Church has claimed for thousands of years that the succession of popes began with the Apostle Peter when Jesus told him that he was the rock. It's not just a boulder. It's a rock. A rock. A rock. On which Jesus would build his church. But is that actually biblical? Let's look at the verse in question that has built the Catholic argument and see why this verse has been taken out of context. This verse is found in Matthew chapter 16, which says, when Jesus came to the region of Caesarea Philippi, he asked the disciples, who do people say that the son of man is? They replied, some say John the Baptist, others say Elijah, still others, Jeremiah or one of the prophets. But you, he asked them, who do you say that I am? Simon Peter answered, you are the Messiah the son of the living God. Jesus responded, blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, because flesh and blood did not reveal this to you, but my father in heaven. And I also say to you that you are Peter and on this rock, I will build my church and the gates of Hades will not overpower it. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven and whatever you bind on earth will have been bound in heaven and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Then he gave the disciples orders to tell no one that he was the Messiah. Now the Catholic Church has long interpreted this passage to mean that Peter himself is the rock on which Jesus would build his church. I will note, it's kind of funny because it says on this rock, I will build my church and the gates of Hades will not overpower it. The reason this is kind of funny to me is because if we look at the very next paragraph, it says this. From then on, Jesus began to point out to his disciples that it was necessary for him to go to Jerusalem and suffer many things from the elders, chief priests, and scribes, be killed and be raised on the third day. Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. Oh no, Lord, this will never happen to you. Jesus turned and told Peter, get behind me, Satan. You are a hindrance to me because you are not thinking about God's concerns, but human concerns. So literally just after telling Peter that supposedly he's going to be the rock on which the church will be built, he also calls him Satan? Here's the reality. The Catholic Church is completely wrong in its interpretation of the text. We must take the full text of scripture into account when reading this passage. The first thing I want to address is the name of Peter and how it is significant. You see, whenever God either changes someone's name in the Bible or gives revelation about specifically what their name is meant to be at birth, it is meant to convey something extremely important about that person's life. For example, Abram, which means exalted father, was changed to Abraham, which means the father of many, to correspond to God's promise that he was going to make Abraham's descendants as many as the stars in the sky. Another good example would be Jacob, which means supplanter or usurper, which was changed to Israel, which means the one who prevails with God. Another great one would be Saul, which means prayed for, which was changed to Paul, which means small and humble. Peter's name was originally Simon, which means the listener, but was changed to rock. But we need to look at some scripture to see how this name is used very intentionally by the Holy Spirit through the writing of scripture to understand why his name was truly changed. Is it because he, Peter, is the rock or is it something else? I'm going to add the meaning of the text each time his name is mentioned. Pay attention to the placement of his name. Luke chapter five says this, as the crowd was pressing in on Jesus to hear God's word, he was standing by Lake Gennesaret. He saw two boats at the edge of the lake. The fishermen had left them and were washing their nets. He got into one of the boats, which belonged to Simon, the listener, and he asked him to put out a little from the land. Then he sat down, he was teaching the crowds from the boat. When he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, the listener, put out into deep water and let down your nets for a catch. Master, Simon, the listener replied, we've worked hard all night long and caught nothing. But if you say so, I'll let down the nets. When they did this, they caught a great number of fish and their nets began to tear. So they signaled to their partners in the other boats to come help them. They came and filled both boats so full that they began to sink. When Simon Peter, 
The listener, The Rock, saw this. He fell at Jesus' knees and said, Go away from me because I am a sinful man, Lord. For he and all those who were with him were amazed at the catch of fish they had taken. And so were James and John, Zebedee's sons, who were Simon's, the listener's, partners. Don't be afraid, Jesus told Simon, the listener. From now on, you'll be catching people. Then they brought the boats to land, left everything, and followed him. Okay, so as you can see here, in every instance that Peter's name is mentioned, it is Simon, except for one time in verse 8 when it says Simon Peter. Why is that? This is the first time that Simon would declare that Jesus Christ is Lord. This is exactly why Jesus gives him the name Peter from the beginning, which is later explained by Jesus in Matthew 16 when he asks the whole group of disciples, who do you think I am? After Peter responds by saying that he is the Messiah, Jesus tells him that God has revealed this to him and that his name is Rock. And on this rock, this meaning the testimony of Jesus' lordship, he will build his church. But wait, how can we know that this rock is the testimony of Jesus and not Peter himself? Because the testimony of Jesus is the entire point of Peter's involvement in the Bible. We see throughout the gospels that Peter is filled with zeal for Jesus Christ. He trusts the Lord enough to at least step out of the boat onto the waves. He cuts a man's ear off to protect Jesus. He tells Jesus that he will die with Jesus if they try to take him. And all those things culminate to what? Peter's denial of Jesus. Peter denied the testimony of Jesus Christ during the crucifixion, just as the Lord said that he would. But after Jesus was raised, he restores Peter. Here's what it says in John chapter 21. When they had eaten breakfast, Jesus asked Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? Yes, Lord, he said to him. You know that I love you. Feed my lambs, he told him. A second time, he asked, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Yes, Lord, he said. You know that I love you. Shepherd my sheep, he told him. He asked him a third time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter was grieved that he asked him the third time, do you love me? He said, Lord, you know everything. You know that I love you. Feed my sheep, Jesus said. Truly I tell you, when you were younger, you would tie your belt and walk wherever you wanted. But when you grow old, you will stretch out your hands and someone else will tie you and carry you where you do not want to go. He said this to indicate by what kind of death Peter would glorify God. After saying this, he told him, follow me. I love this because Jesus is still using the name Simon. He doesn't call Simon Peter in this passage. John is using the name Peter and Simon Peter, but in Jesus' conversation with Peter, he only refers to him as Simon. This passage of scripture is so beautiful because it mirrors how the disciples were called originally. Peter, who owned the boats that they were fishing in, listened to Jesus. And then after Jesus performed an incredible miracle in their sight, they proclaimed that Jesus is Lord. Here, Jesus does the exact same miracle. He fills their fishing nets with more fish than they can muster. And immediately, the disciples know who it is. So quickly, in fact, that Peter doesn't even wait to greet his Lord, he jumps in the water and swims for it. Peter's life mission is to proclaim that Jesus Christ is Lord, which is exactly what he does from that point on, because he was extremely bold in preaching the gospel to all the people. Throughout the book of Acts, Peter proclaims the gospel of Jesus Christ powerfully to all the people. And the testimony of Jesus Christ is the very thing that closes the mouths of the Pharisees and the Sadducees. And through the proclamation that Jesus Christ is Lord, the church began. It was not through supernatural healings, though there were many of those. The power of Christ was found in the regeneration of a man after hearing his words and being beckoned to his namesake. This is the rock. If we were to contend that Peter is the rock, then we would have to equalize him with Christ himself, for Christ called himself the rock, and he is the word as well. In Matthew chapter 7, verses 24 through 27, it says, Everyone then who hears these words of mine and does them will be like a wise man who built his house on the rock. And the rain fell and the floods came and the winds blew and beat on that house, but it did not fall because it had been founded on the rock. And everyone who hears these words of mine and does not do them will be like a foolish man who built his house on the sand. And the rain fell and the floods came and the winds blew and beat against that house and it fell and great was the fall of it. In this parable, Jesus Christ, who is the word, is also the rock on which the wise man builds his house or his life. In fact, there are many more places in which God alone is called the rock, such as Psalm 18.2, 
1 Samuel 2, 2, Deuteronomy 32, 4, and Isaiah 26, 4, to name a few. One particular scripture should be rather eye-opening in regard to how Christ is the rock and how there is no other rock being mentioned here in scripture. 1 Corinthians 10 says this, Now I do not want you to be unaware, brothers and sisters, that our ancestors were all under the cloud, all passed through the sea, and all were baptized into Moses in the cloud and in the sea. They all ate the same spiritual food and all drank the same spiritual drink, for they drank from the spiritual rock that followed them, and that rock was Christ. In the wilderness, when the Israelites were wandering for 40 years, they were given manna from heaven and they were given water from a rock that would follow them everywhere they went. Jesus Christ is the bread of life and Jesus Christ is the rock. He alone can give spiritual drink in the same way that he spoke of himself as the well. The rock points to Christ and will only forever point to Christ. Ultimately, Peter, Petrus, rock, is a name that will only and forever point to Christ, not to himself. Peter's name was not actually changed by Christ because as discussed before, in the last conversation we have between Peter and Jesus, Jesus calls him Simon, not Peter. But instead, Jesus gave him a nickname to point to what his mission in life would be. In Peter's case, that was to preach the word of Jesus Christ, the good news that saves men, and through that, the church would be built. Now, I also have a short that talks about how people were named in the Bible that you can click on right here to get a little bit of a better understanding of how uh, people were named and why names were chosen in the Bible. But as a brief overview, names were very, very important to talk about something that God was doing. If you look at the name Joshua, like Joshua, son of Nun, the person that came after Moses, his name means God is my salvation. Yet we see that the name Jesus in Aramaic is actually Yeshua, which is the same thing as Joshua. Now, we wouldn't say that Joshua, son of Nun, is the Messiah. Yeshua, or Jesus, is the Messiah. Why do they have the same name? Everything in the Bible, and I mean literally everything, points to Jesus Christ, the Messiah, God himself. Just because someone else has a name, or a nickname for that matter, does not mean that they are actually going to be that specific thing. Because if we took this literally, the same way that the Catholic Church is taking the name Petra, or Rock, and applying it to Peter himself, then we would also have to apply the same kind of logic to Joshua, son of Nun, being the Messiah, which is absolutely not true. And everyone knows that's not true. Furthermore, if we look back at that passage in Matthew, after Jesus says, blessed are you, Simon Barjona, he says, I will give you the keys to the kingdom of heaven. But he's not actually just talking to Peter at this point. He's actually addressing all of his disciples because ultimately he gives the keys to the kingdom to everyone who has the Holy Spirit, which is everybody that believes in him. One last tidbit, when Jesus was actually giving Simon his nickname, Peter, he also gave a nickname to two other disciples. He called them the Sons of Thunder. Now, if we applied the same kind of thinking that the Catholic Church has applied in Peter, we would have to contend that there's some other kind of very interesting non-biblical interpretation for those two people. End up getting some kind of weird Zeus vibes from that. What I would ask my Catholic friends to do right now, as you're listening to this, just take a look at the scriptures yourself. Pray about what God has revealed in his word and what he meant for this passage to begin with. Let God be the one to guide you to his truth because he is the one that is the way, the truth, and the life. If Jesus Christ himself was saying that this passage was meant to be about himself and that the term rock was not meant to be actually for Peter. If Jesus actually meant this passage to be about a testimony of himself rather than the establishment of the Catholic Church specifically, then we should really take notice of it. And we need to follow what Jesus has to say about it. Because ultimately, Jesus' authority obviously is way more important than anyone else's. Once again, like I said at the beginning of the video, I do believe that my Catholic brothers and sisters are saved in Christ Jesus. They are brothers and sisters. I know that many Catholics will not say the same thing about me, but that's okay. I know for a fact that I confess Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior, and I believe that God raised him from the dead. I have been baptized. I have had a new life. I have been born again, and I know that for a fact, and I have confidence in that fact. That is all that I have for you today. Go ahead and subscribe to this channel for more videos just like this one here. Like, comment, and share so that you can help spread the gospel mindset. Additionally, if you'd like to support us, we have links in the description for the PayPal accounts and for the Patreon page for this YouTube channel. My wife and I are having our fourth child in the next week or two. So if you would like to support us financially, we would be extremely appreciative. 
Furthermore, we have a link in the description for our Etsy shop. If you'd like some really cool King Jesus t-shirts, hats, or things like that, go ahead and click the link down below so you can represent Jesus everywhere you go. I'm actually not wearing one of those right now. I'm wearing a shirt that a friend gave me. It says, Jesus is God, and I dare you to tell me otherwise. I really like wearing this shirt everywhere I go. It's a hoodie, it's really hot. I live in Florida. It is not fun to wear this like most of the year, but when I am able to wear it, it ends up starting a lot of really cool conversations with people out on the streets. So if you want something like that, go ahead and hit the link in the description down below. Thank you so much for watching and God bless you.